in the past we've learned about work and energy and we learned that work is or the formula for work I should say is force times distance we've also learned what energy is and let's go ahead and give ourselves a quick definition of energy energy is just the ability to do work and you might be looking at, at that equation and wondering, or I'm sorry, that definition, and wondering to yourself, is work therefore equal to our energy? Are they the same thing? And to answer that question, we need to look at our energy formulas and then compare them to our work formula and see if they're more or less the same thing. So if you look in your formula sheet, you'll see several types of energy formulas written down for you. And it's by no means all of your energy formulas, but they give you the ones that you need to know for this class. The first one they give you is potential energy, and they use the variable U for potential energy. The second one they give you is kinetic energy, and they give you the letter K, which makes a little bit more sense as the variable for kinetic energy. And the difference between potential and kinetic energy is essentially simplified as potential energy could move, kinetic energy is moving energy. But we're not going to dive too deep into the specifics on that. You'll learn more about that in physics. But the third type they give you in your formula sheet is the formula for thermal energy. And they give you the letter Q as the variable. Now to be clear, these are all types of energy. They're just different types. So we can assume that these are the same. My question is, are they the same as work? You might be wondering to yourself, where did they get U from? Where did they get Q from? K makes sense for kinetic. K or kinetic starts with K. Where did they get U from and Q from? Well, if you think about it, they already used P for something else, probably power. And they've already used T for a couple of things, for temperature and time. So they had to pick a variable. And it doesn't really matter what we call it as long as we all agree that that's what it is. So, for example, we could say potential energy is P, or we could even say that it's energy subscript P for energy potential. But they use U, so so will we. And the formula they give you for potential energy, if you look in your formula sheet, is mass times gravity times height. And then the formula they give you for kinetic energy is one-half the mass times the velocity squared. And I needed to update that color. But then the final formula they give you for thermal energy is mass times C times triangle T. And what does triangle T mean? Well, triangle means delta or change in. And T is temperature. And then C is just specific heat capacity. And we'll talk about this more in detail later, this formula. But our mission in this video is to prove that one of our energy equations is the same as our work equation, which is force times distance. And this first one, this potential energy equation, looks the least scary. So let's go ahead and try to prove this. And so before we start breaking down this formula, I want to give the formula so, uh, some context. So let's go ahead and draw ourselves a cliff. And let's create some potential energy. So let's say there's a box or some mass hanging off the side of this cliff. And let's say that it is 2 kilograms, a mass of 2 kilograms. So that's this. And let's say, then, that the cliff is 5 meters above the ground. So that would be our height here. And if you find yourself what gravity is, if you find yourself wondering what gravity is, I should say, well, gravity is just acceleration, and it's 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's a constant on Earth. So if this weight were to fall, it would accelerate at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravity. So it's pretty simple. Potential energy equals mass times gravity times height, as we said. And so to solve for this, all we would have to do is plug in our numbers to see what is the potential energy of this box to fall. So we can just plug in our numbers. Mass is 2 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that by our gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're going to multiply that by our height, which is just 5 meters. And you can use a calculator if you want. It's pretty simple. 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times 9.8 is 98. And so the question is, is it 98 joules? And the only way we would know that it is joules is if this was work. So let's see if it is. 
And to do that, we need to break down what this formula is. So we first need to point out that U is just the potential energy. And of course, two kilograms is just our mass. And this 9.8 meters per second squared is our gravity. And more specifically, it is the acceleration due to gravity. And lastly, this 5 meters is just a height, or I'm going to write it as a distance. The reason why I do that is because if you look, the formula for work has distance multiplied in there, and we have distance multiplied in here. And so if this was, if energy did equal work, then mass times gravity would equal force, essentially. And so let's see, well, does it? Well, force is the same thing as saying mass times acceleration, as we've learned in the past. And so what does that mean? Well, it means that mass times gravity, or mass times acceleration, is the same thing as saying force. Therefore, this equation says force times distance. Therefore, these formulas are essentially the same. And 98 joules is the work that would be done if this were to fall. So there you have it. This is joules because it is work, and work does equal energy. And if you're wondering, we could prove that with these two formulas as well, if we were so inclined. It's a little bit harder, but it's possible because they're all energy, and work does equal energy, as we just proved. And if you're interested, you could actually prove it yourself, and actually, I challenge you to do so.